Welcome to Conversations with the USA Racewalking Foundation. Hi, everybody. We're here today with the USA Racewalking Foundation. And today I'm joined with Dave Harriman, who is a Masters USATF racewalking official and has spent a lot of the time helping me put the videos together behind the scenes, as well as Gary Westerfield, a formal, a former um, level three world athletics official, someone who's officiated at the Olympic Games and at the highest level of racewalking as well as having coached many elite race walkers. What we're going to do today is something different. We haven't done this publicly, but we've been doing this privately. Um, recently, the USA Race Walking Foundation has um, hold on. recently the USA Race Walking Foundation has started recording races and then reviewing with the judges by doing a forensic analysis of the video to see whether or not the people um, who judged made the right calls. We're obviously only looking at one view. This view was recorded at the pen relays. Um, it was recorded at my side, which I was not watching while I was judging, but let the camera run. It's possible, of course, somebody could look at things differently if they were, if a walker was passing a judge and making a surge or doing something uh, inappropriate that they weren't doing the rest of the time. So you can't say that every judge saw exactly the same thing and the video is 100%. But as you'll see, the videos are pretty consistent from lap to lap, and we can use this as a good tool. Um, if an athlete is illegal, one lap after another lap in front of the camera, we could probably assume that they're legal, illegal in front of most judges. Collectively, what we were trying to do as judges was determine whether the people in violation of the definition of race walking were appropriately disqualified and were the people obeying the definition of race walking allowed to finish. In order to determine that, we have to have some ground rules. Brian Hanley, who's a world expert on the biomechanics of race walking, has done a number of studies. One study said that when they used world athletic officials, which is the gold standard, that world athletic officials started to detect loss of contact of 45 milliseconds. So objectively, anyone with a loss of contact less than 45 milliseconds is legal from the loss of contact perspective. However, it's still a beauty contest because not everyone who's more than 45 milliseconds gets a call for loss of contact. Why? Because some of these walkers have a lower foot carriage and it allows them to be over 45 milliseconds of loss of contact but still not visible to the human eye. So somewhere, some walkers are between 45 and 55 milliseconds, and whether or not the loss of contact is visible really depends upon their foot carriage. And we will see this when we look at the video, that people who were around 55 milliseconds but had a low foot carriage did not get calls, and people who were around 55 milliseconds and had a high foot carriage did get calls because it gives the judge a greater opportunity to see that loss of contact. And almost every elite walker has some loss of contact. Mm -hmm. It's also important to note that we're not looking for a locked or hyperextended knee when we look at whether or not the knee has straightened. Um, Brian also did a study and some elite walkers landed 178 degrees. The two degrees between that and 180 um, isn't noticeable by the human eye. And as long as they straighten and come to 180, those walkers are considered within the definition of race walking. It's also important to note, as always, that we don't judge whether the leg is straightened until the moment of first contact with the ground. Okay, so what we also want to know is how good are we? What's a reasonable, correct percentage of calls to be made? We're not going to go into that publicly. I kept that private, um, but with... No further delay, we're going to go in and start with the women's. I've also obfuscated the faces, so we can't see who they are. So we're just going to refer to them either by their race number or uh, by pointing at them. So I'm going to just hit play, and this video is going to take not very long, about a minute. And we're going to see all the walkers in the race go by at least once. Some of the walkers go by twice. This is in slow motion or 120 frames per second.
Okay, so those were the leaders. This is the open race and also the U2. It's a 5K at the Penn Relays. Okay, we're about halfway through. And if you pause on any of these, which we will, you'll see most of them have a loss of contact, but it's not a visible loss of contact. Now, once we get through the video, we'll start again and we'll go frame by frame. And I'm going to have both Gary and David also comment on each of the walkers. Okay, now we're seeing the leaders come by another time so we can get a better look at them. And we've seen everybody once. Okay. I'm also going to create a quick chart here. So that if you wanted to know how many frames equaled how many milliseconds, five frames off, off the ground is equal to 42 milliseconds. So where people start to get illegal is when there's six or seven frames loss of contact in terms of loss of contact. Okay, so we're going to get started. And we're going to let our first walker approach the middle of the screen and pause. And we start here, we're looking at the woman in yellow with the blue shorts. We see her foot is in contact with the ground here. And sometimes we have to make a subjective call how much of a frame is off the ground. In this case, she's literally about to lose contact with the ground. So when we come into the air here, we'll call that one frame, two frames, three frames, and she's down. And if she's down for three frames, that's only 20, 25 milliseconds loss of contact. You cannot see that with the human eye. We see that as she strikes the ground, her leg is straightened. We see that it stays straightened. Then we look at the next foot. She's about to come off the ground. We count one, two, three. She is down. Her leg is straightened, stays straightened, stays <clears throat> straightened past vertical. Right, and then starts to bend. So, Gary, David, do you agree that this walker is legal? David agrees. By definition, Gary agrees. All, all we're concerned about is the definition here, snarky, snarky world class. She looks good. She looks good. I would also say from a technique perspective, it's excellent. If you watch her foot carriage, it's low to the ground. Her arms come back behind her hips. She's not bouncing up and down. There's no extraneous motion. Okay, now let's look at the walker in the pink and purple. Okay, so again, she's about to come off the ground. She's off the ground. That's one, two, three, and she's not quite on the ground, so three in a little bit. So she's legal from the perspective of loss of contact. Her leg is straightened. From the moment of contact with the ground through vertical and i would say that she is legal david david agrees gary gary agrees okay now how about her technique and any comments for for those looking at home that might mimic her oh pretty high arm swing okay so what's amazing is that this walker's arm swing is very high would not be the way i would coach somebody to walk and she's so strong and powerful that she still doesn't come off the ground. Gary, any comments? Um, move it forward. I agree with the arms. She gets a little more hip rotation than the first walker, which is good. Yes. Although not, you know, we, we've seen other walkers with even more hip rotation, but obviously if they can get more hip rotation, that will help. Okay, let's go to the woman in the blue here. Okay, she's about to come off the ground here, still on the ground, and now she's off. So from here to here, she's probably off about half the frame. 
and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So she's off about six frames. Six frames puts her at 50 milliseconds. So that should be something that we should pick up depending on how her foot swings. And that foot is swinging relatively high off the ground. Um, and I can speak for myself. I gave her a loss of contact call because I saw it and I thought it was very obvious. And her form is um, reinforcing that. And this was lap one. I did not give her a call here. I gave her the benefit of the doubt. We'll see later she's off even more. So here's she's off. about one frame, two, three, four, five, six, and a little more. So she's off a little more than six. So call that 52 milliseconds. Gary, thoughts? And, and she's all, well, I agree with you. She's off, but she's also leaning forward from the waist. Okay, well, first, they're all off. So she's she should be visibly loss of contact is what you're yes. saying. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay, and we should also point out, David was at the race. You were not. So you're doing this completely from video. David's got the benefit also having been there. David? Uh, yes, she's off. She would have visible loss of contact. That is correct. Okay, because they're all off, so we're not gonna, you know, we, we have to we have to choose our words carefully. All right, Gary went into coaching mode. So, Gary, what do you notice? Well, besides the the rear foot coming up high, yep, um, she seems to lean be leaning forward more. Correct, and you know, you, you and I, and I give you credit for it because you were the one that taught me in 1997 said a race walker should not lean forward from the ankles because that's how we were all taught prior to that mm -hmm. and and we put it in our first book and got ridiculed by people and now nobody leans forward from the ankles right david any additional comments uh no i got nothing i agree with gary okay um now we're going to look at the girl in i'll call it mauve shirt there and black shorts and we're not going to get a great view of her so maybe we can't comment on um her efficiency but we can look and see if we could see her legality so she's just about to come off the ground there she's off the ground one two three four five so that's 42 milliseconds we should not be able to see that the knee was straightened it stays straightened that one comes down she's straightened i'm going to go back and count one two three, four, five, a little more than five. So she's right at that 45 milliseconds. Um, and Gary, you, you've commented to me in private about teaching high school race walkers who are so used to having contact with the ground to be more up, right? Yes. And so if we looked at a walker like this, who's right on that borderline, right? That's what you're trying to coach athletes to do be around 40 milliseconds loss of contact it's not visible to the human eye but you get the advantage of that flight phase true okay let's go to this woman in the purple with yellow writing and the black shorts okay she's just off the ground there so we won't call that a frame and then one two three four so that's legal knee is straightened we look at the next leg. Leg is straightened, and I didn't count. One, two, three, four. Leg is straightened. You guys agree? Legal? Legal. Legal. Okay. Technique-wise, foot comes through nice and low. All right. Anything, anything else anybody wants to comment? I'm looking at her torso. She seems to be a little... I don't know if, we, if it's a correct term, but she's caved forward. Her and That she's got a little arch in her back. Arch in her back, arch. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So one of the things, um, and I'll just do a shameless plug and say, if you go to racewalk.com under learn, there's correcting improper technique. And so if you have posture issues, there are different exercises that you can do that can help straighten your posture because they're probably not just race walking this way. They're probably got, they probably have some kind of muscle imbalance that is causing them to have a posture problem. And, and I think that keeps her from getting much hip rotation. 
Correct. Um, if, if you're leaning forward or leaning backward, right, you can't you can't effectively use your hips. All right, let's look at the woman in the white with the black shorts. So she she is on the ground, off the ground, call it a half a frame. One, two, three, four. Down is probably another half frame, so call it five. So she's right at 42. The leg was straightened. Again, straightened. Okay. Legal, illegal, guys? He's legal. Legal. Okay. Any comments on her technique? Almost no hip rotation. Exactly. So I, I really like her arms. Her arms come back, and you would think that using arms like that would generate some good hip rotation, but she's got to work on that. Okay, let's go with the, uh, I don't know if that's an aqua and and stomach bile <laughs> color there <laughs> uh, for, for lack of a descriptive. Yellow and blue. There you go. You're not as colorful. Yellow though. and blue. All right. So um, first we'll talk about legality. Foot's coming off the ground. Just comes off there. One, two, three four-ish so she's not off the ground leg is straightened leg is straightened okay so i assume you guys agree legal legal okay anything about her technique i think she's she's rotating at the shoulders that's exactly what i was picking up <clears throat> you can read the entire back of her torso there's almost too much upper body rotation not enough hip rotation I agree. All right. Um, green and black. Okay, she just came off there. One, two, three, four, and down. Knee was fine. Knee's fine. One, two, three, four. So we've got legal. All right, if it's not close, I won't ask you guys to repeat it. It's, it's when we get closer, we'll we'll comment. And if, if you disagree with me, just chime in. But let, let's just go to technique. Um, you guys have anything to say? Her arms tend to move a little bit too much, not staying. So, so her arms are carrying high and a little bouncy. She should lock them at 90 degrees and pull the arm back further behind the hip. Yeah, that's what I think. Gary? Um, yeah, you're probably right. She is yeah. getting a little she's bit She's getting of, rotation. Yeah, I was just going to say, she's getting more rotation than the other uh, people in terms of the hips. So she just has to kind of balance that by quiet quieting her shoulders all right the next girl in the white and red so she's just coming off one two three four five and then down so five and a half so that that's right on the borderline she's just coming off one two three four five and a half six so she's on the borderline. What I would say is we've looked at the other laps. This was the first lap of the race. The other lap, she's not off as much. So if she had continued to do that, she might get some calls. Um, but otherwise, she was fine, and the, and the legs were fine. Um, she's kind of doing the, the, the bouncy arms, too. Like, yeah. this angle is very small. It and doesn't cool. change a lot, either. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Kind of the T Rex thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, and she's not really driving her hips well. Um, all right. Let's go to the girl in the blue, number 72. Okay. So, from a legality perspective, one, two, three, four. She's down. Knee is good. She's off. One, two, three ish. So, no, no issue with loss of contact. Knee is good. 
Um, I would say that she's been forward at the waist as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, A lot of arm movement at the elbow. Yeah. Uh, Lower legs, though, are pretty good. Look, look look at that foot carriage is really nice and efficient. Um, but she's she's got to work on that posture right there. Okay, the girl in pink and the flowery shorts, maybe they're flowers. Um, so she just came off, so about a half, one, two, three, she's fine. Knee looks good. Knee looks good. Okay. Through arm swing once she comes up, it curves up, but most of the arm swing it's nice 90 degree. Yeah, so it closes a little bit. Um, not seeing a, a lot of hip rotation. That could be the angle of her arm, too. She might be, it's a little hard to tell. Maybe she's just swinging her arm in and it looks like it's bent more. Sure. All right. Uh, blue. Okay. She just came off. So that's a half. One, two, three. She's fine. Knee is straight. Knee is straight. One, two, three. Okay. From a technique perspective, um, her hands are all over the place. That's minor. Um, her hands also. Her arm angle could be open just a little bit and get that hand lower and behind the hip when she swings through. Any comments, Gary? Yeah, her shoulders are kind of hunched up. Sure. Yeah. No, nothing. I think her, her foot carriage is good. Um, I can I, from I remember her sort of from the race, but I really did notice much of her throughout the entire race. Oh, uh, well, that's a compliment. If we don't notice them, it's good. All right, the next girl uh, is coming through. She's just about to come off the ground. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Four. Now, she did not have enough loss of contact to be seen. My recollection of the race was she didn't look good because she's carrying her foot so high, it's giving the appearance of off the ground. Yeah. But she, she really isn't off enough to be seen, but that's an obscenely high foot carriage um, in terms of efficiency and then legality. Because if she went any more over that threshold she probably would have gotten peppered with red cards okay now we're doing the girl in the white and the red one two three four so she's nice and legal the leg is straight the other leg is straight arms are a little tight and the kind of bouncy up, you know. You guys have anything to add? I agree with the bouncy arms. Nice yeah. steady upper body, though. I mean, yeah. her shoulders are solid and her head's up. And the foot carriage is good. Yeah. It does get repetitive because we're going to see 61 walkers across three races. All right. So, again, she almost has visible uh contact or she almost has continual contact Arm, double contact, arms are yeah. tight were you saying something Gary? well we can't well we can't or on, we can't on carriage see. is a little too high yeah yeah what we can't see in this picture is her head and i just remember from the race she had her head tilted to the left yes. the entire race yeah Okay, uh, 78, the green and blue, as Gary called it. Okay, so she's on the Yellow ground. Yellow and blue. Yeah, on, on the ground, ground, off, one, down. Okay. 
Now this this was a case, David. Am I correct that um, she did get at least a call for Bentney? She got two. One was from me, and one was from Mary. Yeah, Ann. Yeah, 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 yeah. No names. No names. Yeah, she got you two. Can say yourself, but you don't. I don't want to. Yeah. All uh, right. But I was one of the two that called. Okay, so Bentley. and I I show this to Brian Hanley to see if this is what he agrees. This is what we're calling 178 degrees. That is, it's not perfectly, it's certainly not locked back, but you're not looking for locked, you're looking for straightened. She's in the process of straightening. It stays straight and stays straight past vertical. Um, I would not give her a red card. All right. The girl in pink um, has a double support phase. It might even be visible. Um, her knees are fine. I don't like the technique. I think she's got almost more of her stride in front of her body than behind. There's a slight sway back in her posture. Anything, guys, to add? Agreement. I agree. Yeah. Looks almost like she's leaning backwards. Okay, so that was the last person in the race. Now, now we're looking at our lead walkers again. Um, the wo woman in in yellow right is there she's off the ground call it a half one two three and she's down so she's still fine and then if we look at the girl or woman in uh bluish purple she's off a half one two three four five six seven and a half right and the high foot carriage definitely should have gotten disqualified off almost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So we're talking about 55 milliseconds loss of contact and a high foot. Um, last one we're looking at is our person in third, one, two, three, four. So we can see a huge contrast. Now, she's carrying a foot a little bit higher, but she's not off the ground as much. Um, but if we go back and look at the leader, right, big difference between how the, their feet come through. Okay, they're, they're virtually at the same part in their stride. And look where this foot is. And look at the angle of the back of the foot versus the leader over here. So that, that's our women's race. We're now going to go to the high school men's. And I'm just going to play it from the beginning and let it run. Okay, this High was, school men? You mean the Sorry, old, sorry. The men. Let me, I can, I can edit that out. The only men. Oh. Okay. We're now going to go to the men's race. The men's race is both the open U20 um, and uh, Masters. Um, our leader was going under 20 minutes for 5K. Okay, and uh, we're seeing this over Zoom, which is a little jagged. I will edit in the actual video footage so that it's clearer. Um, and we, we've got a, a quite an allotment of people because we've got masters mi mixed in with open mixed in with juniors or U20s as we now call it. David, you can really see the person with the green, uh, sorry, with the red shorts there, how they yeah. have that leaping motion when you watch it in, in slow motion like that. Yes. Well, we'll talk about it later. Uh, you can say something now. We're just filling dead time. So, yeah. uh, well, this that was one who I had my eye on the entire race. He was always on my radar. Okay, now we're seeing um, some of the problem people come by a second time, just so that we got a clearer look at them.
Okay. So we'll go back to the start. And we'll look at the first walker. Now, last year we watched the same walker break the American record. And this is where we really saw that a difference in technique makes a big difference in what is visible, at least from the video camera um, verification. So he's off about a half. One, two, three, four, five, and he's down. So he he's off probably about 48 milliseconds, but we don't see it because he keeps his foot so low to the ground and his leg is straightened. Okay. David, you were there. Um any any notice during you know full speed walking that he was in danger of visible loss? Not, a, not at any point did I notice anything. And that's a testament to his smoothness. He's got good hip rotation going. Um look at his arms come back behind the hips. Gary, you want to add anything? No, no. I think it's Okay, the next walker, it should be pointed out, um, was walking way faster than a pace that they could uh, maintain. Um, so they slowed down dramatically after this. So this would have been the worst that they looked in the race. And we can see they're on the ground, they're off the ground, call that a half. One, two, three, and another half. So maybe four. So very legal from the perspective of loss of contact. Look at it the other way. One, two, three, four, and about a half. The knee looks straight. Um, so I think they're completely legal. My biggest issue is that they have a kind of lean back or sway back in their back, which is going to restrict their hip rotation. I agree. Any comments, Gary? No, I agree. And, and, then he, and I he believe did have a bit of floppy arm. His <clears throat> say it again, uh, David. His arm was a little bit. He he had a tendency to move his arm around a lot. Yeah, and and this is a high school race walker, so you know, very good so far. All right, um, bluish purple. Okay, just about to come off the ground, off the ground, one, two, oh, very legal there, right? Leg looks great. And then we learn hmm. that it's very important to look on the inside leg, the le or, or for us, the outside leg, but the inside of the track. And he lands with the leg fully extended. And then as he comes through, you get a classic bent knee. So one leg is good. One leg is good on contact, but not good once you come through. Um, Gary, David, comments? I agree. I will admit that I would I missed that completely in the race. So it's just so. As an uh, official, and, and, David, and in your defense, there were calls that, you know, I missed a call as well. Not... No, there was a slide in at the beginning which said, "What is a perfect? What what should we achieve as a group? You're never going to achieve perfection, or rarely achieve perfection. You just want the number of mistakes collectively as a group to be as small as possible." Yeah. And, and I'm yeah. also I'm also looking at the eccentric contraction of the of his quads. Uh he, he it's his elongated. Quad, yeah. But we don't judge by that. We judge. Oh, of course. Uh, I know we people. don't. But it could clue you in that this is someone you have to look at. But I, I will tell you, you know, I watched him go by and I was like, oh, my God, that's obvious. And I missed it. the first. I actually missed it the first two laps. And then I was like, well, how did I miss that? Um, and it was on every single lap. We'll see him again. Did he get any calls? He got one call. No, he got two calls. Um, another judge saw I it. I if, if my memory serves me correct, correctly, 
they all everybody except everybody except me gave him a caution so gave him a yellow there were two red cards though okay yes yeah that's what i meant red cards yeah. um all right now we're looking at the next person foot's coming off right here so one two three four basically five which is 42 so right on the edge and i was watching this walker for a while at this point i did not give them a call and if we watch at this point the foot's a little high um but he's he's still at that threshold where he's at 42 milliseconds so and the knees look good um but he he definitely looked hoppy because of that high and I again, as an official there, he was on my radar most of the race. Um, don't don't love the arms. They they could be open a little more. And look how high the hand is carried. It should be down and, and, and below the hip and behind the hip. Which would also help lower his body and keep him from coming off the ground. Okay. Any comments, Gary? No, I agree. All right. Uh, sure, a C guy in white coming through. Okay, he's about to come off the ground. He's off the ground. I'm going to call that one, two, three, four, and a smidge, so four and a half. So he's under 40 milliseconds. The leg is straightened. And he's another person that you could possibly argue is 178 degrees on impact. And then he fully extends and stays extended through push off. Comments? I agree. Mm -hmm. I, he, he never was on my radar at all through the race. Okay. And, 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 and I will say, I like his arms, right? The arms are coming back behind the hip. They're staying yeah. pretty consistent. And I will tell you that that's not how he always walked. He was coached into improving arms. So everybody could improve it if they, if they try. All right, here's another walker, 37. Coming up off the ground, one, two, really no issue there. The leg is straight. Leg is straight. Okay, I'm I'm gonna speed up a little because I think the high school girls will be more interesting than commenting rep repeatedly about all the guys. Um, so we're gonna look at the purple shorts for legality. So he's just coming off the ground. One, two, three, and down. So legal. We look at the leg, legal, look at the leg, legal. Okay, we'll look at the green shorts behind him. Off the ground, one, two, three, four, so legal. Knees look good, knees look good. Let's back up and look at the gray shirt and red shorts. Okay, so he's about to come off the ground, still on the ground, off the ground, almost a full frame. So call that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven frames is 58 milliseconds. Um, I believe he did get disqualified, right, David? Yes, I would. I'd... I know I yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure he got peppered with, with with red cards and yellow paddles and you know so aside from being illegal his leg is fully extended or close to it and then he floats in the air with that extended leg and that gives you that leaping horrific look as his foot now comes down to the ground 
So he needs to kind of retool from an efficiency perspective and a legality perspective. Um, Gary, any comments? No, no, the, you're right on. I was going to say, it looked like he was overstriding. Absolutely. Um, if, if we but might. Uh, that could be just pushing off so hard that's making him go off the ground and he's off. You know, very visible. We, we can invoke the memory of the great Patrick Flannery. Yeah. I, uh, that's that's my recollection of Pat's stride. The kind of, of course. Yeah. Step. Pat's friends with me on Facebook. I hope he's not watching this. All right. Um, so we're going to look here. Uh, foot's coming off the ground. That's one, two, three, four. So legal. Leg is good. Leg is good. Let's move forward. Okay, now, David and I commented. Um, we're going to say nothing and let Gary comment. I'm going to put this into slow-mo play, and I want you to look at the gray and, and red, Gary. And, and I realize you can't see it with the same smoothness that I do. Okay, comments? What am I supposed to see? Uh, what 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 do you think you see when you look at him? Um, perhaps loss of contact. So I, I his, yeah, because his his trail leg, the foot is reaching out, the knee is up, and he's reaching out in front, almost leaping. So in full speed, David, correct me if if I did if you disagree with me, but. I felt he looked like he was leaping the entire race. Every single lap, I stared at the feet, and I just didn't see visible loss of contact. I saw very inefficient technique. You know, very strong upper body, obviously. So the physique is, is holding him, pulling him up. But but if we count, he's on the ground there. So off a half or one, one and a half, two and a half three and a half, and then another half, four, which is 33 milliseconds. Yeah. Wow, that looked much more than 33 milliseconds. Um, I, well, it, I'll, come, I'll, I'll say I didn't give him a red card, but I did cost him. As, as did I, right? Because to me, the caution was I'm not completely confident that he is within the definition of race walking but I was not ready to give a red card. Me too. Um, and, you know, he's got the straightened leg, perhaps a hair longer past vertical. And then if we if we watch this, as he's coming off the ground, he really is reaching forward far in front of his body, right? And then coming down, boom. So he is legal, look bad. And that is, I think, what separates a good judge from a judge looking to disqualify somebody, right? Gary, you said something once that I, I love, which is at least at this level, most walkers are within the definition of race walking. Some walkers, a few, are deserving of yellow paddles. Even less are deserving of a red card. And we're seeing that when we look at all of these races, mm -hmm. that even though I don't like his style, he is walking within the definition of race. That's walking. true. Yeah. I quote you a lot, Gary. <laughs> so even though I'm doing the majority of talking here today, there's a lot of back information that came from both of you guys. I'm just the big mouth. All right. We'll look at the person in the blue. Comes off the ground. Call it a half. One, two, three. Down. Knee looks good. Okay, comes up to the toe, is off. We'll call that a half. One, two, three is down. Knee looks good, so they're fine. And we're just ready to now look at the next person. Um, and since we're here, you know, too much torso rotation going on, but just coming off the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half. Um, 
So they're in danger. Um, I believe the rest of the laps, they were not off quite as much. Um, Cause I don't remember David when we reviewed it, seeing that. Yeah. I don't recall him. Right. And so coming off the ground, one, two, three, four, five. And it should be noted that you don't always get the same measurement from one side to the other. It's not just that someone may be asymmetrical, but the camera angles are slightly different. So when we do our studies, David, I, and Gary would average the two steps into one stride. Um, and if he's off five there, that's 42. So again, we didn't see it throughout the race. This was lap one. So going to call him legal. Then we get to visible con or, or continual contact of the next walker, straight knee. Not quite continual contact there, but only one frame. So he's legal. Get to a master's walker. Again, almost almost continual contact. If yeah, I'd say that's that's heel toe. That's point to point. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Leg is straightened, right? Um, we could comment on inefficiencies in, in stride, but we'll we'll come back. Um, I do want to comment on his stride because, all right, um, high school walkers tend to have some interesting technique issues. So, you know, less than a, a step, sorry, less than a frame off the ground. But wow, you know, just a sauce, uh, equilateral triangle, leg out in front, super straight before you hit contact. And um, not very efficient. Um, arms might be back a little too much. Bring them in a little bit, but you got to reel that foot in, in in a big way. Okay, got a combination of some high school walkers and masters walkers. So again, the lead walker pretty much has contact with the ground and the knee is fine. The walker with the green shoes, again, visible contact, looking good. The walker in the blue, visible, not, I say visible contact, visible when you freeze frame it. it there is momentary double support, um, so no issue, and knees all look good for all these walkers. One more master's walker. One, two, so not off the ground much at all. Too much shoulder rotation. Leg is straight. Looking good. And we're just not going to comment about our friend here who, who showed up a little out of shape, um, but legal. Okay. All right. So I just included this to show once again that Classic bent knee on the inside. And okay, now we're coming back. Um, this person was uh, in danger of loss of contact. Now they're off. That's about a half. One, two, three, four, five. So five and a half that way. And again, look at how high the, the foot carriage is. That's going to give us the opportunity to see the loss of contact. Okay, off about a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a half. And the first half gives you a total of seven. So you take 58 milliseconds and a high foot carriage. And David, I believe both you and I gave him a, a red card. That's, I know I did. Yeah. And uh, this was the guy that we said was disqualified. He's coming off the ground here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, pretty much very close to seven. So if you say a little less than seven to be kind, he'd probably be off the ground for 55 milliseconds and then has the relatively high foot carriage. 
All right, that's the men's. Now we move to the high school girls. All right, I'm going to just make a statement so we can move through this quickly because people who have been watching, it's you know been going on for a while. Every girl in the high school race was legal, which is a wonderful accomplishment for all these young athletes. Um, they were legal on video, and they were also legal by the live judges. None of us gave any of them, uh, or we never collectively gave them a disqualification. So let's just look at this from a technique perspective, because I think the high school girls can learn from that. And Gary, I'll let you kind of lead the way and, and make comments since I've been talking a lot. Uh, by the way, we can thank Dave Schwartz for photobombing us here, walking in front of the camera. All right, so you want to, Gary, you want to talk about the lead walker in purple? Um, she goes, I know who it is. She goes out fast, but she's make, making contact. This so, so they're all legal. I'm, I'm just talking coaching yeah. from efficiency, right? So the first thing I see is, are, are these hands. Oh, the arms are up very tight, and she's right. leaning forward. So, you know, if we could give each walker one thing to work on, mm -hmm. right, that would be good. So open the arms, hold them at 90 degrees. Yeah. Uh, work on your, your core strength so that mm -hmm. you're not leaning forward. Okay. Uh, the young lady in blue. Um, I think if they're, if they're all, I, I, I don't want to use the phrase, but I will. They're too legal contact wise. They, so they have to try about, to get, how get about themselves. You say they have room to be off the ground a little bit more and not have yeah. visible loss of contact. Right. So how can we get them to be off a little bit more? Um, when they swing the arm back, they want to feel a little up movement with the arm. Almost like, and it has to be timed with the push off. So at the point that they're pushing off the ground, they almost want to whack somebody in the chin with their elbow. So and with that that feeling of upness, they'll start to feel a little bit like they're floating. So so the floating what, aspect, a boat floats on the water. There's nothing wrong with floating. Okay, so first of all, if she's pushing off with her right leg, um, it's the right arm that goes forward. Right. So the left right. arm elbow so has to come up just a little higher. So when the, but so when the left arm drives back, the equal and opposite reaction is for the right arm to come forward. Right? Correct. You're not bringing the left arm up, you're bringing the right arm up. Um cuz her left arm is high, it's too high. She wants to bring her arm down and have the other one swing forward and come up to like the sternum. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, we lost a little bit of the, uh, the, the head there. We're going to go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, all right. Uh, let's see if there's anybody else that we can. The, the person that's hiding back here is a perfect example of someone that's too legal. Right. They're going pretty fast at the top of the race. Um, and um, no, almost no loss of contact. Um, how about number six? Number six is a good example. Let me run by her in slow motion. Which one? What color? Blue right here. So live, she looked like she was just stiff-legged, prancing. And, it like almost scooting. Across yeah. the... And if you look at her, look how high, Gary, this is what we were talking about with that former elite athlete that we won't talk about by name. Yeah. Right? Look how high that foot is and how high the heel is. And the leg is still fully extended. Mm -hmm. 
right? The other walkers are not doing that. So her knee's already bending and look at where her foot is versus mm -hmm. the girl in the blue whose heel came way higher, right? That's what, in my opinion, is leading to her prancing. She needs to actually bend the knee earlier in the stride, which is something we rarely coach anyone to do. Okay, uh, 13, the, the girl right here. That's not bad. That looks pretty nice. And she's off She's off for a few frames. What's interesting is number 20, Gary. I don't remember what we pegged about her um, last year, but we had issues with her technique last year. Not that she wasn't legal, but she gave the appearance of not being legal. Her arms are not great. The The arm angle is way too small. But, David, you and I both, like, didn't even look twice at her, right? Yeah, I never paid any. I mean, I, the thing I remember is I remember her being there last year. But there was no compare. And I'm trying to remember what it was. I think her head I, might have bounced. Like, that we were, we were seeing the, the head bounce. But I think it was more than that. Yeah, there was definitely something going on, but you know, she was illegal then. She's definitely legal here. Yes, but now she looked good. Yeah, I agree. So the first girl in blue is leaning forward a little too much, restricting her hip action. Right? You can see, mm -hmm. you look, look how short that, that stride is. Um, girl in Sachem here, tight arms and her hands are curled up, right? All inefficiencies. You guys let me know if you want me to stop you guys want to comment another person kind of leaning forward so here, here's another example of someone straightening and fully extending their knee before contact and then coming down on it so it looks it looks stiff and floaty but totally legal Did she get a call for bent knee? Yeah, she did. Yeah. So having that leg out in front and then the weight coming down, again, probably 178. And right there, I don't know that that would be discernible to the human eye. And then she's straight. But she's doing that because she's reaching too far out with a straightened knee. Okay, got a few more walkers coming by. Obviously, as we get later, they're they're slower, and as they're slower, they pr they pretty much have continuous contact with the ground. Got one or two more walkers coming. Actually, she may be the last walker. 
clearly has to work on both turnover and hip rotation. There's just no stride length here at all. Yeah, this is the last walker. Yep. All right. You guys got any comments in summary? On the women, on the high school girls, just as a collective, I would say that uh, bending, they're, they, they lean forward as a collective group uh, more than they need to. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're, I can say that there is a consistency across many of the walkers. So I think it's fairly common for high school walkers and, and perhaps girls in particular not to have the core strength to um, maintain proper posture, but there's a ton of exercises that can be done to correct that over time. Not sure why I'm getting a, a double view of me all of a sudden. Get that out of the way. Okay, Gary, any comments? Um, it could be that the high school walkers, um, most of the girls in that race were, were from New York State. And there's the fear of the of being judged, fear of being off the ground that keeps them from being off the ground. Um, they're afraid of getting disqualified. Um, that's one issue. The second issue is that they may also do too much running um accounting for um inefficient race walking technique because Meaning they're not only is, race walking but they're going to run they, they they also run not they're not running while they race walk they do running workouts and running races out, correct outside. that's what i'm saying yeah outside of just focusing on race walking yeah mm -hmm. yep okay all right well thank you guys appreciate uh your help. I'm going to